Sir Tim Clark is one of the most influential people in aviation today. After nearly 20 years at the helm of Emirates, he's had an immeasurable impact on the industry as a whole. Whenever he speaks, it's smart to listen. So when he called the recent 5G fiasco one of the most delinquent and utterly irresponsible things he's seen in his career, you know the situation is bad. But you don't even need to take his word for it. Just take a look at the chaos that ensued a few weeks ago. After airlines learned that 5G signals could compromise the safety of their aircraft, flights all across the globe were canceled. Luckily, the worst of it is behind us. Wireless providers have temporarily switched off 5G near airports. But those cell towers won't stay off forever. And once they do come back online, Boeing in particular could be in for a world of hurt. Let me explain. Before hopping in, I'm sure most of you have noticed I've been streaming a lot of FSX recently. I played this game religiously as a kid, and revisiting it has sparked a flood of memories from my days as a young Av geek. It's especially reminded me of those late nights where I stayed up watching hours upon hours of air crash investigation. I've been dying to go back and rewatch all those old episodes, but the problem is that it's not on American Netflix. But with the help of NordVPN, today's sponsor, I now have a way to get around that sort of problem. Now, I'm sure most of you know NordVPN. They help folks across the globe protect their online data. Their award-winning platform keeps prying eyes off of your online activity, making sure your browsing history and user data can't be accessed by anyone but yourself. I frequently edit videos at coffee shops and libraries, and I use NordVPN to keep my passwords safe on public Wi-Fi. But I also use it to get around Netflix's pesky regional restrictions, and watch shows like Air Crash Investigation that I otherwise couldn't. If you want to do the same, then you're in luck. NordVPN is offering a huge discount to my viewers, plus a bonus gift. All you gotta do is go to the link in the video description and use the promo code Kobe Explains. First, let's cover why 5G is such a threat to aviation. Airlines recently realized that newly deployed 5G networks were interfering with their plane's instruments, and the instrument most affected is the radio altimeter. As its name implies, this device uses radio waves to determine altitude. Now, your phone also uses radio waves to send and receive data from cell towers. But radio waves can vary dramatically in length, ranging anywhere from 1 millimeter to 100 kilometers. And previous 3G and 4G networks used wavelengths that were quite different from radio altimeters. But that's not the case for 5G. The radio bands that it uses are practically neighbors to those used by altimeters. Now, there does exist a so-called separation band between them that no one's allowed to use, and it's supposed to act as a safety buffer and prevent spillover. However, it's become evident that this buffer is not big enough, and certain altimeters are having trouble filtering out 5G signals. This ultimately confuses the instrument, resulting in bad altitude readings. This sort of interference can be quite dangerous during landing. Especially in bad weather or poor visibility, pilots rely on their instruments and autopilot to set them up for a safe touchdown and the autopilot will configure the plane based on what altitude it thinks it's at. So a real concern is that if the plane has just touched down, but the autopilot thinks it's still several thousand feet in the air, systems like the spoilers and the auto brakes might not activate. This would degrade the plane's deceleration and increase the odds of a runway excursion. An even more horrifying scenario comes when visibility is at its minimums, such as in dense fog. In this situation, a pilot might not be able to see more than a few hundred feet in front of them. They must rely solely on their altitude readings to know how high they are, and if their plane's altitude is actually much lower than what the altimeter is saying, well, you get the picture. But there is some good news here for my international friends. This issue seems isolated to the United States. In several European countries, for instance, 5G buffer zones have already been created around airports. Here, 5G signals are limited, and 5G antennas have to be oriented down and away from incoming aircraft. 
While the FAA hopes to implement similar restrictions in the US, they're honestly too little too late. 88 US airports already have a 5G tower within two miles of a runway. In addition, the type of 5G that's used in the US is extra problematic. American wireless companies have aggressively rolled out ultra-wideband, or millimeter wave, 5G. This is the fastest type of 5G, but it's also the most likely to create interference. Okay, so how does all of this affect Boeing and Airbus, and why is Boeing in a worse spot? Well, it turns out not all radio altimeters are affected by 5G, and different planes use different models. So, the FAA conducted tests to figure out which ones were actually at risk, and it turns out that most planes are actually clear to keep flying even with 5G around. But there do remain a few big exceptions. On the Airbus side, the A220 and the A340 have been identified as aircraft of concern. For the A340, this isn't a huge deal. Almost all of them have been retired, with only Lufthansa still flying them to the US. The A220, on the other hand, is a bit trickier and poses more risk to Airbus's core business. Unlike the A340, the A220 is still young and will headline Airbus's regional offerings for decades to come. But even so, the plane isn't very popular in the US. There are just 60 of them flying domestically, with the vast majority operated by Delta. And since the plane has a short range, no overseas airlines fly them to the US. Yes, Delta might struggle for a bit, but the airline has a plethora of other regional jets that can sub in for the time being. Ultimately, 5G's effect on the A220 shouldn't have a huge impact on its global operations, and won't deter most airlines from purchasing the type. The same cannot be said for the Boeing 787. It is the only Boeing jet that is susceptible to 5G, but it's also the most consequential. Right now, Boeing is buoyed by three commercial offerings, the 787, the 737 MAX, and the 777X. But with the MAX still grounded in parts of the world, and the 777X not selling, the 787 is by far their most stable source of orders. Now, unlike the A220, 5G's impact on the Dreamliner has a global reach. Remember, the 787 is a long-haul jet intended to connect distant cities and over 30 airlines have chosen to buy the Dreamliner to help them service the US market. Both domestic and international airlines have canceled 787 flights to and within the US. And while this problem isn't Boeing's fault, their customers are still going to turn to them for a fix. Luckily for Boeing, both AT&T and Verizon have agreed to temporarily suspend their 5G operations around airports. But temporary is the operative word here, these providers have already spent the money to build the infrastructure, and they intend to use it. While both the CEOs of United and American have been optimistic about finding middle ground, the wireless carriers may ultimately have more leverage when negotiating a long-term fix. Altimeters and autopilots and landing configurations are all pretty nebulous concepts for your everyday traveler, and until a crash occurs, the threat of 5G will likely fade into the background. Meanwhile, the lack of good cell service at airports will be very apparent, especially as 5G becomes more ubiquitous and consumers get used to its faster speeds. We have to trust that regulators and lawmakers will do what's safe rather than what consumers want, but that's far from guaranteed. If concrete regulation isn't passed, Boeing would have to make concessions, such as upgrading the altimeters of all the Dreamliners in service. Now, Airbus would have to do the same with the A220, but again, there are just 60 of those flying in the US. Meanwhile, hundreds upon hundreds of 787s across the globe service the US market. This exercise would cost tons of money and take a long time to complete. Now, hopefully it'll never actually come to this. Hopefully, lawmakers will take quick and decisive action that limits 5G near airports. But if they don't, this retrofitting process could have a profound effect on Boeing's business and further disrupt an industry that's just started its COVID recovery. So what do you guys think? Are you at all hesitant to fly right now? Let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below. Thank you so much to my patrons for helping to make this video possible. If you want to join the Patreon community and help this channel to grow, go ahead and check out this link right here. And as always, if you learned something new today, leave a like and subscribe to keep learning. And until I see you again, don't forget to look up.